ah, bacterial meningitis. Before I start, I'm gonna explain what is meningitis. This word, naha. Meningitis. The meningitis are the connective tissue covering the brain and spinal cord. It's a connective tissue covering the brain, the brain and spinal cord. Consists of three layers. The outermost layer is dura mother. Here. A dense and touch tissue that's it, it duplicated to form the periosteum of the inner skull. We need the dura is arachnoid here. A network of loose connective tissue that lack blood vessels. The arachnoid is closely adhered to the peer mother. Peer mother is here. Which is the innermost membrane that contains blood vessels. Yes, I have a clip that you can clear more clearly. Yes, this is a meninges. This is peer mother. This is arachnoid mother. And the outermost dura mother. Okay. In this area contains CSF fluid around the brain. Now, a little bit explain more later. Okay, bacterial meningitis. Bacterial meningitis is an acute inflammation of meningitis and CSF, the leading cause of neonatal meningitis. The leading cause of neonatal meningitis are Group B Streptococcus and E. coli. Meningococcal meningitis is the only type latency transmitted by droplet infection from nasopharyngeal secretions. Today we have vaccine, hip vaccine. Pneumococcal vaccine and meningococcal vaccines can reduce the incidence and mortality rates associated with bacterial meningitis. This is the way of, sorry, <laughs> forgot. This is the way Oh, sorry. How the bacterial enter to the CSA pathway? It's not so falling in your nose, in the in the in the in the nose. We have epithelium and cilia for protect the body this video no, no sound when the meningococcus virus enter in the nose Syria prevents meningococcus from adhering to epithelial cells. Respiratory virus damage cilia. Respiratory virus come here and damage cilia. When permitted Meningococcal adhesion permitting meningococcal adhesion. It is but Brazil. 
Menigo cocci migrate through epithelium in through into blood vessels. Menigo cocci enter to the cerebrospinal fluid or CSF. This area is CSF. Menicococci stimulate bodily cytokine production. Cytokines attack neutrophils, white blood cells, and cerebrospinal fluid. Neutrophils secrete large quantities of cytokines. Cytokines cross market blood vessel permeability. Resulting in leakage of fluid into surrounding brain tissues. That's called cerebral edema. Like this picture. Cerebral edema causes blood vessel compression, resulting in severe reduction of blood flow in the brain. Thank you very much for the clip. Uh, okay, next. This is inflammation of the meninges, the membranes that enclose the brain and spinal cord. The meninges consists of three layers, dura, arachnoid, and pia mater. Between the arachnoid and pia mater is the subarachnoid space containing blood vessels that supply the brain. Meningitis typically affects the arachnoid, subarachnoid space, and pia mater. Meningitis can be caused by a large number of various organisms. Different age groups are susceptible to different causative agents. In the majority of cases, the offending organism originates from an infection elsewhere in the body and gets to the central nervous system by several ways. It may invade the bloodstream, then disrupt the blood-brain barrier to gain access to the brain, or it may spread directly by way of the nose, throat, or ear following a respiratory or ear infection. Some organisms can reach the brain by traveling along olfactory or peripheral nerves. Uh, pathophysiology. The most common root of infection is vascular dissemination form as focus of infections elsewhere. For example, organisms form the nasopharynx that you will see in the video previous. In was to the underlying blood vessels close the blood brain barrier and multiply in the CSF. The infective the infective process is like that seen in any bacterial infection, inflammation, exudate, white blood cell accumulation, accumulation, and varying degree of tissue damage. Clinical manifestations is a symptom. In neonates, meningitis in newborn and premature infants is extremely difficult to diagnose. The, the infants are usually well at birth, but within a few days begin appear ill. The vagu and non-specific manifestations with are characteristic of all neonatal sepsis. They are little resemblance to the findings in older children. They reveal feedings, have poor sucking ability, and may vomit, and have diarrhea. They display poor muscle tone and lack of mo movement and have poor cry. Other non-specific signs 
that may present include hypothermia or fever, jaundice, irritability, irritability, dosiness, scissors, respiratory auriculitis, or apnea, cyanosis and weight loss. The food hands and bulging fontanel may or may not be present until late in the course of the illness, and the neck is usually supple. Untreated, the infant condition will decline to vas cardiovascular collapse, scissors, and apnea. Even this improved antibiotics and more rapid diagnosis, the prognosis of neonatal meningitis has not improved it indicates likely due to the virulence of the infectious pathogen, the infants and young children, between three months and two years of age. The illness is characterized by fever or hypothermia for feeding, vomiting, market, irritability is like the same. Lessness, scissors, and bouting or tense fontanel, which are often accompanied by a high pitch cry. In children and adolescents, the onset of illness may be abrupt and rapid, or develop progressively over one or several days, and may be preceded by a fee by scissors, a fee by illness. This is a sign both sides of meningeal irritation. If the children or the infants, the new new need have this symptom, have this symptom, that's definitely meningi, meningitis. Definitely meningitis. Okay, I have the clip for exam. The Wittgenski size and chronic size. Hello everyone. Today in this video, I will perform the second part of the CNS examination. Signs of meningeal irritation. In this, first we have to examine for the neck rigidity or neck stiffness. In children, we have to tell the child to touch the chin on chest. If child is able to touch, that means neck rigidity is absent. If child is not able to touch the chin with chest, that means neck rigidity is present. For examination of the neck rigidity in small children, we have to suspend the head at the edge of the table. Then we have to flex the head. If you are able to flex the head, that means neck rigidity is absent. If you are not able to flex the head, that means neck rigidity is present. In infant, in spite of the meningitis, signs of meningeal irritation may be absent. Even in severe acute malnourished baby also. Sometimes child is having the local pathology of the throat, lung or cervical and having the neck rigidity. But the other signs of meningeal irritation will be absent in this case. Example, if the child is having retropharyngeal abscess, upper lobe pneumonia, cervical spine pathology, in this case, neck stiffness will be there, but other sign will not be there. We label as a meningism. Now, the other sign of meningeal irritation is chronic sign, in which child will be in lying down position and hip of the child is flexed to the right angle with our left hand and we have to keep our right hand behind the ankle. Then we will try to extend the knee. If we are able to extend the knee beyond 135 degree, that means chronic sign is negative. If we are not able to extend the knee beyond 135 degree angle, that means chronic sign is positive. Then we have to elicit the another sign, Brugeski neck sign. In this, when we will flex the neck of the patient, it will follow by the flexion of both lower limb at the both knee and hip joint. 
in case of the meningitis another is the brudzinski leg sign in which you will flex the one lower limb there will be simultaneously flexion of the another lower limb occur another is a tripod sign in which child will sit with the extended legs and supporting the trunk by placing both the hands behind the back it is because of the spinal meningeal irritation child will have the rigidity of the back and poker spine can be there sometime extreme rigidity of the neck and the back will lead to the opisthotonus posture so all these signs of the meningeal irritation will be positive in meningitis it so whenever we will elicit all these signs of the meningeal irritation child will have the pain during the active and passive both movements because of the inflamed meninges and the spinal nerve root will be stretched so child will restrict all active and passive movements so this is all about the meningeal irritation sign in next video i will cover the cranial nerve examination thank you so much okay, thank you for the click on this video this shall have no more but i have a new app no more for you is another click you know this me try for a second uh this this this, this. In the clip, the doctor access Pustin skin neck size. Pustin skin neck size. Patient placed in the spine position, and neck is passively flexed toward the chest. Positive test is elicited when flexions of the neck cause flexion at the knee, and or the hip of patients. Yes, the. Charlie can't flick his neck to the his neck to the chest unless the knee is flexion and this is chronic sign that the leg cannot extend more than one hundred and thirty five degrees. Or the other leg flexion. Yes, the doctor try again, and the both leg flexion. Yes, the child feel pain when the doctor flick her head. It is the size of meningeal irritations. What size of meningeal irritations if the child have the clinic size and put in ski size like the video that you see? Yes, the child or the children have the child have a meningeal irritations and mini meningitis for sure. Okay, go to the next page. Complications. If infection extends to the ventricles, tipus, fibrin, or adhesives may occlude the narrow passage, thereby obstructing the flow of CSF and causing obstructive hydrocephalus and have a subdural effusions of, of 
pain occur and thrombosis may occur in meningeal vein or venous sinus brain abscess may be may form by delic extensions of infections or by vascular dissemination extensions of the infections and areas of cranial nerves or compression necrosis from increased pressure may cause deafness dryness and weakness and paralysis of facial and other muscles of head and neck okay diagnostic evaluation a lumbar puncture is the definitive diagnostic test the fluid pressure is measured and samples are obtained for culture gram stain basal count and determination of glucose and protein levels sedation with fentanyl and midazolam can alleviate can alleviate the child's pain and fear associated with these procedures this is the procedure that nurses have to do like this when help the doctor for a lumbar puncture it's like a sit sitting dorsal recompense or a lateral dorsal recompense like this the lumbar puncture procedure prepare all necessary equipment and establish a sterile field put on a sterile gloves and mask administer sedation for the patient prescribed by the pediatrician Place the child in the lateral decubitus position and have somebody help to keep the child fixed during the procedure. The child's knees and neck should be flexed inward in order to increase the available interspinous space. Prepare a skin and set up sterile drapes. Draw an imaginary line between the top of the both iliac crests to locate a L3 L4 interspace. Palpate a suitable interspace to insert the needle. Once the needle is in place, restrict the child movement. And once the CSF is seen, use a collecting tube to collect the specimen. 5 to 10 drops to each CSF tube is adequate. Then remove a needle gently and press a sterile gauze on the injection site to stop bleeding. Then use another sterile gauze to dress the area. therapeutic management. Acute bacterial meningitis is a medical emergency that requires early recognition and immediate therapy to prevent death and avoid restore disabilities. The initial therapeutic management include the following isolation precautions, Initiation of antimicrobial therapy, maintenance of hydration, maintenance for ventilation, reduction of increase in ICP, reduction in reduction of ICP, management of systemic shock, control of scissors, control of temperature. 
treatment of complications. The child is usually moved to an intensive care unit for close observation. An IV infusion is started to facilitate administration of antimicrobial agents, fluids, anti-epileptic ducts, and blood. If needed, the child is placed in respiratory isolation. Maintain hydration. Maintain hydration. Maintaining hydration is the prime concern. This patient's condition determine whether IV fluids are needed and the type and amount of fluid. The optimum hydration involves corrections of any fluid deficits and electrolyte abnormalities, followed by fluid restriction until normal serum sodium levels and no size of an ICP. If needed, we should decrease ICP and implement it. However, long-term fluid restriction is not the standard of care because a lack of fluid Volume can reduce blood pressure and crosses at each meal. Okay, next. Oh, this pain of complications like healing loss is a common. The patients should undergo auditory evaluation shortly after the charge so that audiology and speech and communication therapies can begin as soon as possible. Okay. The drop. Size of gastrointestinal hemorrhage or secondary infection may complicate, it, complicate ster steroid administration steroid can uh, anti-inflammation. Antibiotic treatment will cephalosporin demonstrate superior for promptly sterilizing the CSF and reducing at the incidence of severe hearing impairment, as I explained previous. Administer antibiotic as soon as possible. Steroid for anti-inflammation. And antibiotic as soon as possible. Okay. Nothing here that you see in this and the clip and no don't know the word. This is the 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 this word. No whole liquidity. It means next recess past C flexion. This like this like this boy. This is normal. This is abnormal. Like this boy. The next recess. Passive flexion. Okay. Nursing care management. Nurse choose take the necessary precautions to protect themselves and others from pos possible infection. Teach parents properly and washing technique and remind them as needed. Keep the room as quiet as possible. As most children with meningitis are sensitive to noise, bright lights, and other external stimuli. Most children are more comfortable with our pillow under their head, but with head of the bed slightly elevated. The bed is slightly elevated and the child are more comfortable with our pillow. Under the head. Okay. Avoid actions that cause pain and increase discomfort, such as lifting the shy heads, because the, that you see in the clip, the shy cannot flexion. And feel pain. Prevention of falls is 
essential. Eh, sorry, prevention prevention of falls is essential. The nursing care of the child with meningitis is determ determined by the child's symptoms and treatment, observations of vital signs, neurologic signs, loss of conscious, urinary output, and other pertinent data are as carried out as frequent interval. Prevent of falls, avoid that cause pains and increase discomfort. Determined by the child's symptoms and treatment, observations of vital signs, neurological signs, loss of punctures, urinary output, and other pertinent data is carried out at frequent intervals. Okay. All children are observed carefully of size of complications just described, especially increased intracranial pressure, shock, respiratory distress, just light threatening. Okay. Non-bacterial or aseptic meningitis. The term aseptic meningitis refers to the onset of meningeal sy sy symptoms, fever, and pheocytosis with our bacterial growth from CSF cultures. Aseptic meningitis is caused by many different viruses, include apovirus, enterovirus, herpes simplex virus, cytomegalovirus, and human immunodeficiency virus. Enterovirus is the most caught, is the most common cause of aseptic meningitis. The onset may be abrupt and gradual, and maybe many of the presenting size and symptoms are the same as for bacterial meningitis, include headache, fever, photophobia, and nucleolytidity, nucleolytidity, like this. Mm -hmm. The treatment is primary symptomatic, such as acetaminophen for headache and muscle pain, maintenance of hydrogen, Sorry, maintenance of rehydration and positi posi positioning comfort. Okay, this is a clip video of viral meningitis. Meningitis is an infection occurring mostly in children under age 5. It happens when certain viruses invade the meninges, which are the tissues that cover and protect the brain and spinal cord. The meninges are arranged in three layers. The layer that actually touches the brain and spinal cord is called the pia mater. The spiderweb-like middle layer is called the arachnoid mater. The outermost and toughest layer is called the dura mater. Cerebrospinal fluid, which also protects the brain and spinal cord, flows between the meninges and over the surface of the brain. The most common cause of viral meningitis is a type of virus called enterovirus. Other viruses that can cause meningitis include the mumps virus, the measles virus, herpes viruses, and a variety of viruses spread by blood-feeding insects such as mosquitoes and ticks.
viruses that cause meningitis may be spread through the bite of an infected insect. However, the two most common ways the virus is spread are through fecal contamination, which can happen when hands are not washed after using the toilet or changing a diaper, and through contact with the body fluids from an infected person, such as through sneezing or coughing. Once inside the body, the viruses make copies of themselves and enter the bloodstream. Viruses travel through the bloodstream to the brain, where they cross the border between the bloodstream and the brain into the cerebrospinal fluid. The viruses spread throughout the cerebrospinal fluid and infect the cells of the meninges. The meninges become inflamed as the immune system begins to fight off the infection. Symptoms of viral meningitis in infants and young children include fever, irritability, loss of appetite, and trouble waking up. Symptoms in older children and adults include fever, headache, stiff neck, sensitivity to light, sleepiness, trouble waking up, nausea, vomiting, and loss of appetite. The symptoms of viral meningitis are similar to those of bacterial meningitis, but are usually less severe. Doctors may recommend acetaminophen or other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for fever and headache. For meningitis caused by a type of herpes virus, doctors may prescribe an antiviral medication such as acyclovir. There is no treatment for most viruses that cause meningitis, though most people recover on their own within two weeks. Okay, next. Tuberculous meningitis must be considered in children who have trouble to or live in developing countries or who live with or are immigrants from developing countries. Each infection can occur with tuberculous meningitis. The most common clinical findings are meningitis, signs, fever, alterate of alteration of consciousness. Scissors. Nursing care is similar to the care of child with bacterial meningitis and in both administrations of medication support the child control of the pain and neurologic monitoring. Early diagnosis of tuberculosis meningitis in the child can significantly reduce the disability caused by hydrocephalus. A common complication of this type of meningitis. Nursing care is similar to the care of the child with bacterial meningitis and involved administration that's an, okay, I talked already. Okay, next, vein abscess. Intracellular abscess form when biogenic organisms gain access to neuronal, to neural tissue by way of blood stream from foci of infections or from direct inoculation of organism or from infections or surgical procedures. The most common symptom is a severe headache as the inflammatory process proceeds. Symptoms intensify and include vomiting, fever, scissors, successful Management consists of surgical drainage that drain the, uh, the discharge in the brain out and antibiotic therapy. Surgical drainage, yes. Chronic ear infections, sinus, sinus, uh, sorry, 
sinusitis sinusitis yes and congenital heart disease are the most common predisposing factors of the of children with ab brain upsets the majority of brain upsets are caused by aerobic and anaerobic and anaerobic streptococci in neonate is fungi are most common in immunocompromised children the most common size of intracellular abscess or the parental, temporal, and frontal lobes. Early signs of the disease are body. However, however, the most common symptom is a severe headache. Yes, I almost said. Okay, next. Okay, this is a encephalitis. Encephalitis is an inflammation process of the CNS that is caused by a variety by a variety of organisms, including bacteria, spino, fungi, protozoa, and another. Most infections are associated with virus, and this discussion is limited to those agents. Diagnostic evaluation early in the cause of encephalitis. CT scan results may be uh, normal. CT, CT scan results may be normal. Children may gradual with fever, headache, and local rigidity, nausea, vomiting, ataxia. Later, hemologic areas in the frontal temporal legends may be seen okay uh, therapeutic management still contain icp con monitoring corticosteroid iv immunoglobulin for uh, upgrade immune system. Observe consciousness control of the cerebral manifestations and adequate nutrition and hydration. With observations and management as for other cerebral disorders. Uh, very young children less than two years of age with viral encephalitis have increased leak of Neurotic, neurotic disability includes learning disabilities and epilepsy. About 80% of patients with autoimmune encephalitis make a full or nearly full recovery. Nursing care management observed for the deterioration in unconsciousness. Isolation the child is necessary. However, always use good hand hygiene. Good hand watching technique. A main focus of nursing management is the control of rapidly rising ICP. This I talked several times. Neurologic monitoring, administrations of medications and support of the child and parents are the major aspect of care. This is inflammation of the functional tissue, called parenchyma, of the brain. Inflammation causes the brain to swell, producing a variety of neurological symptoms. It is a very serious condition requiring immediate medical attention to reduce the risk of long-term complications or death. Encephalitis can result from brain infections or autoimmune reactions in which the body's immune system mistakenly attacks its own tissue. Primary brain infections are most often caused by viral invasion. A large number of viruses can be potential culprits, some of which are carried by mosquitoes, ticks, and other insects or animals. The most common causative agent is herpes simplex virus, HSV, which includes HSV-1 and HSV-2. 
HSV encephalitis tends to affect people younger than 20 years old or older than 40 and is often fatal if not treated promptly. Autoimmune encephalitis usually occurs as a secondary immunologic complication several weeks after certain infections or vaccinations. In this case, the immune system produces immune cells or antibodies against some brain proteins that resemble the proteins of the infectious agent. Immunologically mediated encephalitis may also occur in patients with cancers or autoimmune disorders. Examples are anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis and VGKC complex antibody encephalitis, in which the immune system targets NMDA receptor and VGKC protein complex, respectively. Symptoms vary depending on the cause and the affected brain area, but often include fever, headache, stiff neck, sensitivity to light, altered mental status, cognitive problems, and seizures. Infectious encephalitis typically starts with flu-like symptoms and progresses over several days, while autoimmune encephalitis often evolves over the course of several weeks. Some types of encephalitis are associated with specific symptoms, such as sensation of deja vu, certain unusual movement patterns, or hallucinations of disagreeable odors. Encephalitis must be suspected in patients with sudden unexplained changes in mental status. Diagnosis is based on physical exam and medical history, which may suggest different diagnostic tests for different patients. Most cases, however, require brain imaging studies such as MRI to detect edema and brain lesions and cerebrospinal fluid analysis to identify the causative agent. MRI can also help rule out other conditions that produce similar symptoms. Because prompt treatments are critical for survival, several medications may be started before the causative agent can be identified. Treatment with antiviral acyclovir is often initiated immediately and continued until HSV and varicella zoster virus encephalitides are excluded. Empiric antibiotics may be given until bacterial cause is ruled out. Treatment for autoimmune encephalitis may include corticosteroids, intravenous antibodies, and plasma exchange. Supportive therapy includes fever and inflammation reducer, intravenous fluids, and anti-seizure medications.